Egypt have archers. That means they've definitely got chariot archers as well. Oh, Mayans. I don't know where any of these people are. Um, over in that direction, apparently. And Hattusa has just appeared over in this direction. Yeah, I think it, it gives me a vague sense of where they are on the map. It doesn't give me the exact location. Now we're keeping an eye on this. As long as Babylon and Egypt are at war with each other, I don't mind it. But I'm, I'm just reluctant to let them do anything. Cradle of Civilization prefers to build each different kind of districts and likes other civilizations who do the same. So me getting two holy sites there probably wasn't a very good idea, but never mind. There's a missionary. We can spread feed the world to this city. That'll be good. Moving wheel on. Let's get writing quickly. I really hoped I'd find another city state, but nope. So far, nothing. Yaraven has just given me some good options in this direction, but yeah, no, it's it's not found another city state for me. So we'll we'll keep we'll keep looking. You never know. I might get a little bit lucky. Just watch for the movements of troops. That spearman is definitely getting a bit closer to me there. I don't like that. They are still at war with Babylon, so I don't think Egypt are going to do anything silly, he says. Very hopeful and with no evidence whatsoever to back up this theory at all. There's the Settler in Uruk. I'll go Granary and then I'll switch back to the Settler in, uh, after I've built myself my government building. There we go. My religion has been spread. That means Feed the World is now in this city. I'm getting myself a little bit more food. What are we on? Nine population, 15, 23. Oh, population wise, we are falling behind against the deity AI, but no worries. We're doing some good scouting on the border. They've still got a lot of archers. Egypt, 817 military strength. If they decide to attack somebody else that isn't Babylon, I could be on the front line here quicker than I would like to be. So we'll have to just keep an eye on this, I think. Political philosophy. I'm not at war at the moment. I don't plan on being at war for a little while. Now, autocracy would give me production towards wonders in my capital, which has 25 production. It would give it more yields. I could try and build Etamananki or Apple. Padana? Oh, that's risky, but I like it. I like that a lot. Oh, I very rarely do this. I normally go straight for Classical Republic because it gives me housing, amenity, and more great people points. Now that would help my cities to grow a little bit, but if I wanted to put some production down into Wonders... Yeah, you know what? Let's do this. It's a little bit different. I don't normally do this. Autocracy. We've got urban planning. Urban planning is good. Let's get... Um, oh, actually, is it good? No, we're going to get colonization. I'm going to get myself urban planning first, then I'm going to put in wonders in a second. We'll go first envoy counts as two, and discipline wise, I think that's still good. We're not killing any barbs at the moment, but I could be soon. We'll go Agogi just in case I need to get some troops in. But autocracy now gives me a little bit more yield because I've got the palace in this city. But now we can think about either getting audience chamber, ancestral hall, or warlord's throne. I don't plan on going crazy in this game, so I think I might give myself the ancestral hall so I can settle out a little bit more. That'll be production towards settlers in that city. I might just go audience chamber, you know? Just go for a really big city. Although Etamananki is now an option. No, let's go Let's go to audience chamber. You know what? I'm just playing this a little bit differently. I'm playing this game a little bit differently. I don't know if this is the best thing to do, but we're just playing the game as we feel it. This is where all of Egypt's troops are. I'll just sat in the borders. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Blech. Oh no, Babylon has made peace with Egypt. Okay. Okay, that's um, that's not ideal. That's not ideal. We need to make friends with people now. Come on, not keen on this, not keen on this. We're just gonna have to see what we can do. There is a city. There is a holy site. And let's just immediately get ourselves a builder. This settler is gonna go up to the north. Just gives me a bit more of a base to work on. I've got an envoy. There's nothing I can really do with them right now. So I'll go drama and poetry. We can go theater squares and see if we can go through that tree. Yeah, I feel like walls are gonna be needed here. I definitely like the sound of walls. Let's see what Egypt does with their army. I'm hoping they're going to be a bit confused after the peace goes through and that they won't really immediately send it towards me. But you can never be sure of that. <laughs> Sometimes uh, AI will just go, yep, I'm going to just attack you now. That's um, that's how this is. And you sort of have to look at it and go, okay, I guess that's just my life now. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, that's tempting to attack Babylon though, isn't it? They've got a settler right by somewhere that I wanted to... Uh, they are powerful and they're on my border. Who am I to say no to a settler though? Oh, this is going to be the worst idea in the world. Let's declare the war on Babylon. Yep, I'm going to regret doing that. I'm going to regret doing that massively. There's the settler. You've got to escort these things, Babylon. I'm sorry, you just do. 
And we need to send reinforcements. They've got a spearman, which isn't great, but I've got a lot of faith. So let's just uh, burn it on a couple of war carts to give myself just a little bit more of a boost. Oh, I haven't met her to see yet, which is literally just over there. Uh, okay, right, I'll get a war chariot and send it over in that direction. But that is awesome. Unless, can you, can you mute it, Yerevan? Is that, is that okay? I will work it out. Everyone's in a golden age. Fine. What are we going to do? Free inquiry gives us more science. Let's me turn commercial hubs and harbors into science as well. Not good if you don't have either of those pen brush and voice good for building districts gives me a little bit of extra culture my culture's not too bad monumentality lets me get more settlers that is something that would be useful or i could go for exodus which would mean that i could spread my religion around a lot quicker i could just basically make sure like i'm doing now with egypt that there's no chance for them to do anything but follow my religion if they make their own religion it's a bit expensive good thing about that was uh, I, I could use my religion to just convert a few people. I've got Yerevan, don't forget, so I could give myself a nice uh, multi-charge apostle, spread it round, and then convert to a religion that gives me science or culture or even gold per turn, something quite useful. Monumentality obviously just lets me buy in things. I'm actually going to go for Exodus because monumentality is good, but settlers, I think I can just, you know, build. So I'm going to do that. Let's go Corvée quickly. Settlers, Agogi, Diplomatic League. These are all good things. Get the camp there just to give this a really really good first tell um that is really bad loyalty but what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna move my satellite across the river it just means it's protected a little bit in case the ai does choose to attack me oh interesting if i settle on the coast egypt have got a bunch of galleys and will probably attack me so i'm tempted to actually settle one further back there just so that i'm off the coast <laughs> <laughs> I can get myself boats later, but yeah, I just, I feel like Egypt are going to join in with this war and I'm going to be at total war very, very soon. Oh no, no, she thinks that I'm worthy of her time. Interesting. I'm, I'm minus 23 still, which isn't, that's not great. Minus 11. Oh, that's a really, really close city. Um, I might have to settle on the coast thinking about it, which isn't ideal. But next turn, I will get a, a governor and I will get some decent population. I'm just going to hold off one turn before settling. Our troops are skirting around each other, refusing to attack. I just, we, we know that this is kind of a proxy war. This is a bit of a false war, a false flag, like uh, something really boring. Oh, Preslav has just appeared. Over in that direction somewhere. Okay, fine. Nothing for us to worry about right now. Oh yeah, Yerevan, go on, go on. Go and meet Hattusa for me. That would be very kind if you could. There we go. <sighs> minus 10. It's not great. Now it's minus 8 because I've got more population than it expected me to have. I'm going to give myself Magnus so we can go provision. But that is just about loyal now. Just about loyal. Not entirely loyal, but just about is fine. Well, Uruk is now producing the Apadana. I don't know if we'll actually pull this one off we'll give it a good go you know what i think i'm gonna actually hold on to this city which is the cheekiest most ridiculous thing i've done all game but i'm taking it as horseback riding just a single horseman just a single horseman will give me a huge advantage in city defense now i'm thinking about getting scripture in quickly but i think actually just being able to buy uh, and build my settlers out fast is by far the better thing because i've got uh, at least one city on that apadana i mean is building this many wonders early game a good thing? I don't know. Probably not. Sometimes you just have to do it anyway, don't you? How is theology, though? I want to go military tradition now. Wonder is still being produced in Uruk. We're on 32 production per turn, which is pretty impressive. I think I want more production in that city. So construction has got to be where we go now. So we'll try and work on that for a little bit. There's military tradition. Nothing too exciting about that one. But I'm spreading my religion to my own city, which means I've got reformed church. And now enough loyalty to hold the city because you get more loyalty for having your own religion in your own city which is lovely kish two population on top of some iron as well it's all lovely plus free holy site just to make this feel even better beautiful egypt aren't moving their armies to the border which i i will admit is reassuring i like that they also oh no 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 don't declare a surprise war i said come on uh, they do have a luxury they say they're not going to trade it with me because they don't like me but i could give them some diplo favor to force the trade kind of keep an eye on that i reckon we can make friends with egypt once my grievances with babylon disappear which you know i know that's sort of trivializing the problem but it will go away eventually oh egypt is getting uh plus 4.6 which means i think they've gone exodus i don't think i'm building oracle they've got a holy site though so we'll keep an eye on that if they do found their own religion i think i can snuff that out really quickly 
Yeah, I want to make peace with people again. This, this early war isn't very useful for me. I mean, everyone is far too strong for me to attack. Egypt has almost a thousand military strength, and Babylon's walls are already up at 32 strength. I don't fancy cracking into either of those, to be absolutely honest with you. It's, it's both sound like terrible ideas. I do fancy trading with Egypt. I'll give them a bit of gold. I know that, but I think Uruk needs the extra food, so we'll do that for now. Oh, these, oh if, if, if they start sending troops to my borders, I'm going to feel very afraid very quickly i can't lie yeah there we go three food and six gold per turn that's not a bad route to egypt i think yeah getting mediterranean egypt on side as an ally later into the game always comes good always comes good i always like it as an idea you know i am having a massive crisis of decision making here this this is kind of what i'm thinking about war or peace with babylon pros advantages currently they have 140 military strength that's not much there is a fairly weak city on the border with no defenses with iron and gypsum and potentially even a campus very soon that i could easily take i'm not a million miles off being able to get iron working and i can use my faith per turn to actually purchase in swordsman fairly quickly in fact i could even go for apprenticeship pretty fast as well so dragging out this war really doesn't give me a disadvantage negatives 881 military strength egypt they could turn on me at any point right now taking a city would generally generate more grievances which would indicate that Egypt would probably come after me and Babylon has 28 technologies to my 11. The chances that they're going to stay this week are, is quite slim. They could be spawning muskets or whatever there you know very soon. If there is a window to attack that window could be snapped shut very fast. I think what I'm going to do is hold on to the war for now, move my chariots down, see if we can just attack this city from like five different sides, maybe pin in with swordsmen. But as as soon as this gets scary, as soon as Babylon decides that they are, uh, you know, through with messing around with me, I will make peace immediately. Look, there is a swordsman on the way. This is the sort of thing I mean. Could get scary very, very quickly. I did just get an archer though. Archers will help me to defend myself very nicely. Look how many scientists and admirals and generals have been claimed. Yeah, I just realized Babylon do have a great general. So their swordsman is 49 strength. Oh, that could wreck me if it got too close. Here is the Apadana though. I managed to build that using Autocracy. Two envoys in my capital as well as giving me two slots for great works which is great because there's a lot of relics out there and I do want the relics. But from now on the more wonders I build in my capital the better. Oh Buttress has been boosted as well. Lovely stuff. Oh there's a few different things that I want to build in this city now and Etmananki would be fairly decent. I don't have a huge amount of marsh at the moment but it does exist. I do have some so I could make use of it. A few other very exciting world developments as well. Scythia over there. Rome over in that direction as well. Wulin has appeared to the north of me and Taruga has appeared. Interesting. So there are a lot of additional people spawning into this map now. I'm looking forward to seeing how quickly everybody sort of hits the ground running. Are we going to find ourselves in positions where people overtake us almost immediately or do we have time? Yeah, the chances of me taking this city are, are nigh on impossible. But it's so strong and Babylon's defenses just keep spiking up every time they get a technological upgrade. I'm going to go for peace. Babylon, I like, I like to think of Babylon as more as the late game enemy, you know? We will be at war with them. We will probably take them over, but I'm going to need a lot of tech and I'm probably going to need an air force before I take them on. So, with, I mean, it's all good for now. Let's instead get trading. Look, you can see, look at all this. Open borders, they'll give me pretty much all of their stuff for just one luxury. I like it. They'll be a pretty good ally as we go. Now, Egypt, I hopefully think that Egypt, once these uh, grievances disappear from Babylon, Egypt should like me again. But we'll hold on to that one for now. Let's just quickly get a water mill in Uruk though. There's construction. Oh, not quite done. Come on, don't taunt me like that. And there's her two cert found as well. That'll give me two strategic resources of every type that I have found but not uh, unlocked. It's not huge really, but they've unlocking the map for me nicely. So I'll take it for now. Oh, well, Egypt actually did manage to found a religion. Interesting. Choral music, meeting house. It's nice but I can't allow it. What I'm going to do is get myself this temple. Once the temple's finished, I'll be able to get myself a apostle. Use Yera then to give that apostle the ability to remove 75% of Egypt's religion. And then we can, should be able to nip it in the bud and remove the religion pretty much instantaneously. 
It's what I'm hoping we can do anyway. We'll see if that actually works out like that, but I, I think we can do it. Right, apprenticeship, we're off. Uh, I'm amazed Babylon hasn't got apprenticeship already. That's three mines, right? They just, they haven't done it. It's very strange. I got bored. I'm using gold to buy the temple. It's a good use of gold in my capital. Lovely. And I think I should be able to buy an apostle next turn. Yeah, hopefully so. If I could nip this religion in the bud and stop it from even spreading, that would be perfect. Looks like Hong Kong has just appeared as well? Interesting. Which direction is that? Off over to the right somewhere. Fine. We don't mind that at all. And here is an apostle. Perfect. Now, what I can actually do is give myself the promotion, use two charges on Egypt, and then evangelize my religion with it. It's kind of the crazy plan I've got going here, but it should work beautifully. Here we go. Religion eliminates 75% of existing pressure. Oh, ho, ho. perfect. We should be able to spread my religion nicely with two charges of that. Another city. This is one, two, three, four, five, city number six. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Nice marsh, nice maze to work as well. I kind of moved where I was going to put it because there's a nice little aqueduct industrial zone complex. And I'm also going to try and put Colosseum down as well, which makes it a little better. Yeah, we don't mind this little arrangement. Let's get builders out. I have defensive tactics. Maze, nobody's attacked me yet, but feudalism, we're not far from that. Oh, getting better builders. This is going to be lovely. I think uh, just a couple of builders in Uruk I'm building just to make sure that I'm working all of these improved tiles. Should massively help to increase the production of my capital. And another settler. Let's go and settle over here. Again, all Colosseum adjacent buildings. I never thought I'd say this, but one thing we're being a little bit unlucky on at the moment is barbarians. There aren't any spawning anywhere, which means I can't kill the encampments and get my bonuses. So yeah, we're almost too safe on this continent. What's going on? I never thought I'd be in this position. It's, it's mad and uncomfortable. I don't like it. Egypt is getting a lot of faith per turn. They haven't spread their religion around yet, but I'm worried that like something, an apostle, a missionary, something might have escaped out at some point, but that's the religion gone. I will generate grievances because they're going to disappear very quickly. I think I'm losing eight per turn, nine per turn at the moment, which is wonderful because we're still so early in the game. So they will forget about this pretty quickly. It may draw some sort of war declaration if I'm unlucky, but we'll just have to live with that. There is the religion for Eriscor for spreading it to their capital. Their religion no longer exists. And then I shall evangelize in a second and spread myself out from there. 10 population capital. I'm just looking at governors actually. I've got connoisseur. I'm tempted to, yeah, I will get researcher. I know that I should be spreading my governors out a little bit, but a 10 population capital, look at that, up to 41 uh, science per turn. That makes a huge difference. I don't want to lose out on stuff like that, so that's why I did that one. Um, oh yeah, Babylon is now getting a little bit of gold per turn. That's a good sign. Means they should hopefully begin to trade with me again. They, uh, I need I need gold, gold per turn. I need to actually find other people on this map. If I can do that, that would be amazing. There's another. Fair. Oh, I, I do not regret going for this Pantheon. I really don't. I I know it was a difficult choice, but oh lord, is it good. Egypt denounces me a second time. Okay, that's, that's a little bit annoying. I did, uh, I have converted the religious city. They're not going to forgive that probably, are they? Never mind. Uh, another holy site is finished in Kish. That is a beautiful one. Let's just quickly, I'm converting my gold into faith right now. So building shrines like this. Oh, that's, it's turbocharging my cities. I am not unhappy about doing this at all. But let's just quickly return to friendly territory so that I can then evangelize my religion with my remaining charges. And as my population grows with Feed the World, we are having a huge impact on Babylon here. Look at this. I just gained uh, one population there, one population there, one population there. That's gone from minus like two to minus three loyalty per turn almost instantaneously. This is Babylon in a golden age as well. They will not be able to stop me from having some fun here. This is great. That is the arena finished. I would love to get the Colosseum, but I don't have the gold to buy the tile at the moment unless I can oh there we go do some trading perfect buy it in this city and then switch the tile over like so Colosseum 11 turns let's get it done evangelize belief now we have 10 cities following my religion which is pretty cool I could crusade that would set me up to attack everybody later on look at this Babylon up to 50 strength I'm really really pleased we didn't get drawn out into a long war with them because that would have been messy everyone's favorite religious belief Teeth! Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! 30 gold that would give me. Or 20 faith per turn. 
or we could go cross-cultural dialogue and pump in the science. Again, using my faith to give me science. I quite like that. Combining that with what? Means I can really focus on production and culture. We're just filling in the science of my empire. Um, oh yeah, look at that. 13 per turn. I'm actually quite glad I did that. It yeah, means I don't need to focus on it as much. Watch this. This is a farm next to my capital on a river, so it should get a science. Yay! Man, my builders really do not uh, go very far. I need more charges. There's apprenticeship boosted. Let's just pick that up quickly. Putting another farm down. How many more farms do I need? How many have I got in my land? I need six in total. One, two, three. That is it. That is all I've got. Oh, that is that is particularly poor. Okay, well, well, that that's number four. I have one builder charge there, and then one builder charge here. So we'll be able to go five, and then I'm gonna have to use you. Oh, I really didn't want to waste the you on a farm, but I'm gonna have to, aren't I? Unless I get myself a builder in this city, which I probably could do. Egypt is trading with me. They they are saying they're not, but if you offer them enough in a trade deal, eventually they do come around and start trading with you. They're just not offering me a lot right now, but they will. They will. Um, there is city number seven. How are we doing econ economically compared to people? Seven cities, 33 pop. Uh, five cities, 30. And five cities, 30. We've actually economically now pulled ourselves back in population to compete with the AI here. This is wonderful. Uh-oh. Uh oh, oh, all kinds of stuff is happening. We've just got to 750 BC, that's why. Vilnius is somewhere, Mogadishu is somewhere, and Samarkand is somewhere as well. We'll keep an eye out for all of these people. There is a farm. Feudalism, I'm hoping, I should, just putting one more farm down now, we should get there. I'm gonna do the same thing now to Babylon. What we're gonna do is just give myself an apostle with five charges, give myself the triple strength in other civilizations promotion using Yeru then use two of my charges and then convert my apostle over. I don't intend to, you know, really take the world over with my religion, but that doesn't mean we can't get the full benefits from it, you know? So we'll we'll have a little bit of fun. That's feudalism boosted, by the way, though. I had to put a lot of farms down to do that. A lot of farms. I really hope the game appreciates what I had to do there. And there it is. So, settlers. I'm not really building settlers at the moment. I'm tempted to go monumentality next era. So what we're going to do instead is put corvée in, serfdom to replace that. Then I will go for feudal contract. No, limes, just in case I do put walls up. Then diplomatic league. There's still a lot of city-states out there to meet. I I could meet any of them at any point, you never know. Hanging gardens, pyramids, great bath, all have been constructed. The AI is now beginning to pick up some of these early wonders. I've got to keep an eye on that because if I want any of them, I'm going to have to jump on them soon. Babylon is now getting industrial zone points. I kind of feared that might happen, but never mind. Another governor. What am I going to do? Pingala could get grants to get more great people. I don't have anything right now generating, but I will get an industrial zone in this city pretty quick. However, I think I'm going to get the housing and the amenities from getting other governors in. So we'll pick up Reina to start with. I mean, I think I'll go Liang. But yeah, just popping them down into cities just to help them to grow is always a really good thing to do. Uh, I'm just about to get ship building as well. So we're going to go and explore around the world. I'm really hoping this city's going to flip to me though. My population is continuing to grow around it, but it does have a campus and I haven't bothered to build any campuses myself. I'm on 68 science per turn and I have no campuses of my own. This is really good. 10 turns. I want to get to 7 75 era score, that's 16. Ooh, that's quite a bit. I'm gonna get some from Colosseum. I'm gonna get some from finishing a beautiful theater square. This industrial zone would be only worth plus one right now. Unless I improve that gypsum, that would make it two. Really, that aqueduct needs to finish, doesn't it? Before we can get that going, build ancient walls. Mm. Finishing my religion. Actually, that will give me some error score, so we can do that one. There's just uh, another bunch of followers. These are really high population cities, so actually I get a lot of science per turn from them, which is beautiful. Or I could get a galley. Yes, a galley is a couple of error score as well. I could levy city-states. There are options. I am kind of reassured that there are a few options right now, but I do need to just kind of keep an eye on this. I don't want to let it spiral away from me. Colosseum. I think I've got five cities in range of this at the moment but we had range for a couple more if we needed, but two culture, loyalty, and amenities per turn for all of the cities within six tiles of the Colosseum. It includes my Pingala city, includes a lot of my other core cities. A really good pickup. I was on 40 culture. I'm now on 54. So that's a big boost of culture per turn. Beautiful. When I could pinch, actually, uh, Anshin, I could pinch it. It would use all of my envoys, but I'm getting 
spare ones from Apadana right now, so I might as well. This will give me a little bit of science from my relic. We need to look at great work soon, but that is uh, hopefully a little bit more exploration. Yes, we've just met two people that... Oh, what a world. This is such a cool world. Oh, I love this map already. So Persia is directly to my north, and Saivia is over in this direction near the Yellowstone Cordera. So I think America's in this game, or will be in this game at some point. They're not going to start until ages in. Interesting. Saivia, honored to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. Persia, honored to meet you as well. Let's try the old friendship trick. Yay! Oh my goodness, it's Gilgabro point two. Saivia just accepts friendship right off the bat now, which is wonderful. We've got minus 16 for Persia. Babylon will like me at some point, which is hilarious now that they've got no grievances with me. But okay, otherwise everyone's fairly happy. I can do a little bit of trading, which is just lovely. It's my favorite bit about meeting new people is like, give me stuff. All of the gold Saivia wants horses. Of course they do. And get a couple of luxuries as well just to make myself really really ecstatically happy and have a look at the great works anyone selling anything cheaply right now no great works of writing no great works of relics okay no that's fine we just wanted to keep an eye out for stuff look there we go there's the science pattern from the relic so we still haven't met a couple of people i think they're the people probably that have stolen all the great writers the thing is every time people spawn in they start with a bunch of great people points and a huge amount of gold as well look saivia's still got over three thousand gold so we're gonna see quite a few people buying these writers up that's a really good thing for us long term oh i just lost a bunch of farms in this city which is is not great I don't know what to do with my gold. Oh, I've got a lot of gold per turn coming in, but I, I don't know whether to focus on getting my temples up and running or to get builders going. I think I'm going to focus on getting temples. I don't know if that's the right idea, but it does give me a lot of faith. It does give me a lot of food and housing. It helps me to grow my empire up, so I'm going to stick with my gut feeling on this one. Monumentality will spiral out of control very soon. Now let's get ancient walls, which will finish engineering. Beautiful. That's aqueduct sorted. Now I'm just being lining to i think we're going to go for industrialization of it it's quite far away if we'll go military engineering first get an aqueduct up oh stuff is happening again stuff is happening again uh there's a city state and oh the letter over there oh i love the letter this is the game for the letter i really do believe that i'm really going hard on faith at the moment there there's a what which is two more science per turn in my capital which is just a lovely as well as a bunch of extra faith and we can get in a second temple now with my gold perfect faith per turn beginning to rise you just see monumentality is going to come good oh we can get an alliance up now which is good we can go for monarchy no one else has gone for a government above mine yet so this is good i'll send them delegation so babylon are about to accept my friendship which i honestly i love that that's really good i'm going to steal a city from them and then there's nothing they can do in fact actually they'll probably end up losing this city as well i can probably pick up both especially if egypt fail to go golden um how much do i need 10 era score i'm gonna get three from theater square two from the government uh two from my boat so that's seven need something more i need something more i could just go for a campus in my capital that would give me the era score feels a bit boring i said i wouldn't oh right hang on there's evangelizing belief that will give me some what can we do Oh, it's always so tempting to go for Crusade, isn't it? Just in case we attack later. Oh, why do I never... I, I always doubt myself. I should just go for it. Religion spreads 30% further away. I'm going to pop that on because it's just a really good passive bonus. It spreads a huge amount more religion. And uh, the more it spreads, it's not just the amount of cities. It's the fact that, for instance, we look at Babylon, 11 citizens in Babylon. Only six follow my religion, but that pressure is increasing. I could probably get to about nine or ten, and that's in itself worth another science so having huge pressure just means that we get a lot more citizens in each city following my religion makes a big difference but look there's four era score for being the first to clarify my beliefs i think we should be good to get a golden age this time around friends with babylon and i'm gonna go for a research alliance with babylon because quite frankly that sounds wonderful a uh, military alliance i believe with saivia no they don't want that they don't actually want any alliance so yeah military will do for now but look there we go more diplomatic favor per turn i reckon we can work we can work on everybody else it's fine we're doing okay there we go babylon has lost their city very worryingly that's a musket and that is on its way to me right now <laughs> no how about we say together no to the musket don't like that i'm gonna have to fortify on that tower keep myself nice and safe we'll finish the theater square we'll get the walls up but i think i think we should 
be fine. That is inappropriately uh, difficult to defeat. <laughs> What's going on? Now, I believe... Oh, the musket just went. Okay, well, don't complain. Oh, Babylon lost the population there rather than me. I like that. That is... I, I, that is, I can approve that. There's the splendid theatre square complete. I have four turns now. I should be able to just build a galley and that should be fine. This free city, I'm just now going to move in all my troops. Uh, oh no, there's the musket. Oopsie. If I can go and pillage things, that would be pretty nice as well. Oh, look, my capital. Oh, it's doing so well. It's got such population. It's got such production. And now I'm just going to cut something else. I mean, do I cut this into this city? 113 production. How much am I going to gear? 63. I could chop an aqueduct out pretty quick actually so let's do it let's do it we can probably do this fast so let's just quickly chop that out that's halfway done and i'll go and move on to that tile over there to finish the aqueduct off ethiopia has just emerged okay we're gonna get some real late starters now i'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes oh ho, ho. no 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 barbarians have found me in the sea that's not good and finally a very special shout out goes to glorious petra matthew wilkinson paul coffee dayboy91 sean Socrates, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trailmix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, Arby Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Esri Dax, Devil Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Henners, Dr. Bobby. Thank you all for your support and for everyone for watching. See you all next time. Goodbye.